How's it going, fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC. Today we're gonna go over a bunch of new stuff that has come in and I'm gonna do my first impressions after using some of this stuff for a few days. And we're going to talk about this whole old timer knife thing because everyone's been asking about it and I, there's definitely some confusion in regard to the blade steel and stuff. But um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of stuff to go over. We're just front step sitting today. It's a beautiful day in New Hampshire. It's gonna be like 70 degrees. And um, yeah, lots of work to do, but I figured I'd make a video for you guys. Um, real quick though, I just wanna thank you guys for the support on the video the other day with Nikki and I. It's at like, gosh, uh, last time I checked, it was at like 2.2K views or something like that. And like so many comments. And that was just like, it was such a fun video to make. So we're definitely gonna do another one, but I wanted to thank you guys for the support. Um, those videos are a lot of fun to make and um, she's, she's a very special person to me. So it was just a, a fun video to do, but we'll do one again soon for sure. So thank you guys for welcoming, welcoming her into the community with open arms, even though she's not a knife girl at all. But yeah, that was a fun video. So let's hop into this old timer thing, right? Um, so this is a knife that just recently came in to my collection a couple days ago. This is the old timer Bruin. This is a knife that was made in the USA. It is brand new, and it's from a series that Old Timer is doing where they're bringing back American manufacturing, doing it in the States, and trying to make some knives again here with um, what I would call premium materials for this brand. So this one caught my eye right away. This came from Knife Center. Um, I believe it was 72 bucks. Um, American-made lockback sodbuster type knife. It is a perfect size. It is slim. It is sleek. It is elegant and very useful. It the reason it caught my eye was because I used to use old timers when I was a kid. I was using the USA-made ones that were just absolutely stunning. Then they switched basically everything over to China. I stopped using them and buying them because I found that the quality had diminished um, exponentially and they were no longer an interest of mine. However, I am trying them again now that this is made in the States. The good news is this is a fantastic knife, in my opinion. So I have been using it. It came terrifyingly sharp, decently even bevels. I mean, the, I cannot explain how sharp this is. It is very scary <laughs> how sharp it is. Um, it is a lockback, and the action is absolutely gorgeous. So, very silky smooth. This is a knife where I can actually open it one-handed, even though it's a lockback knife with no thumb stud or anything. It just has a nail nick. I can actually open it one-handed extremely easily because it is so smooth. And there are washers in here. That's a huge difference. A lot of slip joint knives and a lot of lockback knives that are traditional do not have washers on the inside. This is running on two phosphor bronze washers, which I don't know if the camera will pick them up, but hopefully you can see just that hair of a shimmer in there. That is a washer and it has two of them. That's unbelievable. That is not a normal thing for these types of knives. Sorry, I have a hangnail and it's actually driving me nuts right now. So plucking it off. That is not normal for these to be running on washers. That is very cool in my opinion. So this action is absolutely incredible. Now I did put just a drop of knife pivot lube in here, the um, ultralight one, but it didn't need that. I just did it to um, flush out any metal particles that maybe could have been in there because basically with case and with old timers I have found that they have um, like medical metal debris or metal particles in there sometimes and I just like to work those out so it didn't really need to be oiled but I did put just a drop in there and um, it was equally as smooth as before like the oil hasn't changed the action it came out of the box this smooth centering is absolutely perfect okay perfect centering um there is zero I'm, and i mean zero back and forth play um there's no no up and down play at all this is rock solid nice thin blade stock we have saw cut bone real real bone um saw cut covers and nickel, silver bolsters, and shield, and pins. 
everything is flush, everything is great. Um, it's an absolute beauty. Here's where I'm a little confused. So on the Knife Center website, it said that this is in 1095 high carbon steel that will build a patina as it grows with you and as you use it. On the stamp, it says 1095 HC for high carbon. So 1095 high carbon. This in theory should, you know, grab a patina pretty quick. Um, I work with 1095 quite often. A lot of my case knives are in 1095. And I had heard through the grapevine that some people were using this old timer 1095 high carbon and it was not picking up a patina. I've been using mine and it is not picking up a patina. And I'm wondering if it's because maybe it's a stainless steel blade. So we don't know what this is because the package says stainless steel. Um, it says it right here. And it also says it on the back. So I don't know. I don't know what this steel actually is because 1095 is not stainless. The box says stainless, the knife says it's not. Who, who knows what it is? All I know is that it's sharp and it's working very well. But this is the package that it came in. Um, if you want to look at the details real quick. So it says Skinner blade, stainless steel blade, nickel, silver bolsters, bone handle, and lockback folder on there. And it is 3.7 inches in total length. So the only issue I'm having is that I don't know what steel I'm working with. Which I don't like. I, I wish that I knew what this was. I guess we'll figure it out. Otherwise, this is a fantastic knife. I'm already obsessed with it. I can already um, tell you guys that this is worth looking into because it is very cool. I, I do want to know what this steel is, though, because <laughs> who knows? We don't know what it is. Um, let's move on here. So another thing that has come in recently for testing is the rebar. I already went over why we're going to be revisiting Leatherman as a whole. Um, this is very cool so far. So I did use this today and I have been using it. <sighs> Has dog hairs in it, of course. Um, I tested the wire cutters this morning on some fencing. They just went through it like butter. Um, ergonomics are fantastic on this. I have found that people have started to bitch and moan about the ergonomics of this as Leatherman continues to make, um, tools for people with baby hands so people that have used the wave or the p4 or whatever are like well the rebar doesn't have enough enough rounding on this on the scales or on the handles and it's just a little sharp calm down this is very comfortable to use guys i don't know what people are talking about um this is very comfortable 100 percent. i'm i mean i'm squeezing on this and like yeah do you feel it in your hand Yes, but it's so worth, like, the rugged aspects of this multi-tool. And I'm really enjoying this so far. I think that the configuration of this and the package that you get is very nice. It's breaking in really well. Um, I don't mind that the tools are on the inside. Like, it doesn't really bother me. Um, love that they lock. Love the Serico. Everything about this is just really cool so far. So... I'm really enjoying it. Um, I just wanted to document that the wire cutters were the bomb this morning. And yeah, I, I am really enjoying this so far. Now let's look at a few of these slips that have come in from Richter Knives. As you guys know, this is someone who I recently discovered and I instantly fell in love with his work. He does leather work. His name is Michael Richter over at Richter Knives. I will link a um, little a little outlet to his channel in the description but basically he's just a guy doing leather work from home um not as a full-time thing or anything just for fun and i was like i need every slip that you could ever create because i'm obsessed with them so i have a whole bunch of his i have more on the way um he's playing around with different texturing and stuff so this one is a little bit of a wood grain type look as with this one but this is natural leather this one wasn't dyed and then this one is a micarta texture for my GEC bullnose. 
And I just wanted to look, you know, show you guys these real quick and stuff because I think this is something that you may want to look into for your Swiss Army knives or your traditional knives. I think this is a fantastic way of carrying them and protecting them in your pocket. I've, I haven't found better leather work, I'll be honest, um, in terms of pocket slips. I have never seen anything like this. This is the best quality I, I can find. I'm obsessed with this work. 35 bucks shipped for these. That's unbelievable, guys. Look at this. Look at this work. So let's see what we have inside each one, and I'm just going to talk about them a little bit. So first we have this natural leather slip, and this one has wood grain texturing, handmade stamp on the back. And inside of this one, I have a GEC yellow rose muskrat model, I believe this is. This was a gift from someone the other day that came through, my friend Cole. So I've been running this in a slip, and I think that these, these kind of complement each other. This reminds me of like a banana, and I just think that like this cream colored, um, threading with the natural slip just kind of looks like bananas and cream I don't know it's just I think this goes really well together the light colors complement each other very well so I've been running this with this one and um we've got two blades on this that obviously I started using right away oh come on please focus you little fucker it's not gonna focus. I'm trying to show you guys the patina. There we go. So I started using this right away and I am really enjoying the blade length on this knife and the reach that you get. And I also like that the blades are the same. So this blade is literally the same as this one on the other side. They're just um, two long clip point blades. This is a knife that I would figure would be great for filleting fish. Somebody put that down in the comments before and I agree. I've been using it for food prep and just general tasks. Come on. Man, this, this camera just never wants to focus. Anyway, um, I've been using both blades and basically I've been using one for, again, my food prep and my stuff that I don't want to be yucky and then I have another blade for utility tasks or for dog food so um, basically that's what I do anytime that I have a knife with two or more blades I'll typically dedicate one to my food and more sterile tasks and then one to my dog's food because they eat a raw food diet and um, utility tasks and stuff because I don't want to be eating tape residue when I'm using my blade, right? So one is for me, one is for everything else. And that's kind of how I've been running this knife, but this is just absolutely gorgeous. Definitely picking up a patina already. Really, really nice. Um, because I have not put my own edge on this, I have, I've had to touch it up a few times on the ceramic rod. Um, that will change, you know, once I have time to put my own edge on this. Uh, I did that with my bull nose and it just never needs to be sharpened anymore. But until you put your own edge on these GECs, you're just having to touch them up every time you use them really because you're. it doesn't come with like a real edge. It comes with a guideline on where you should put your own edge. And until you do that, you're just kind of, each time you touch it up, you're basically like creating a burr that's like breaking off as you use it. That's, that's how I view it. So it'll stay sharp for like a couple uses and then you have to go back and redo it until you actually thoroughly and truly apex that edge. So that's kind of one of the downfalls of these knives is just that they don't come with a real edge. And that's something I'm going to make a video on at some point is like real versus fake edges, which is a thing. Um, and it's not talked about in the community very much, but I think it's something that could be discussed further. So anyway, this one, re I really need to put my own edge on this because I'm just having to touch it up like every couple times that I use it. It just needs a, a wider bevel. Otherwise, an absolutely stunning piece. I love using it. I love running it in this slip. I think that this pairing looks absolutely phenomenal. A little banana cream action. This goes right down in there. Very cool. The next one I have is the 
the bullnose slip. So this is one that Michael had already made for his bullnose, I think, and then he ended up just giving it to me. Um, so we have a 71 stamped down at the bottom for the model number. We have his, you know, maker's mark, which is an R for Richter Knives. Lanyard hole. Nikki from the video that you guys watched put this on here for me. She does all my lanyard work because I'm incapable and she's very good at it. She could do it blindfolded, I swear. So this just got put on there. This needs to break in. But inside we have my GEC bullnose. Um, these slips are kind of like quick release type slips where you basically squeeze the sides and the knife will come out once they once they break in. So this is this is what I was talking about a minute ago is um you got to put your own edges on these on these GEC knives. They don't they don't really come with one. I widened the bevel on my GEC a decent amount. I wanted it very slicey and now this never needs to be touched up. It literally just runs forever. So this is my own edge that I did on my Stones freehand. It has a patina so it's not really shiny right now, but you can see the thickness of that bevel and it's not factory. It's wider. So this this knife and this steel are just incredible when you put your own edge on, when you work through the factory guideline edge. This 1095 is very well done, in my opinion, very toothy, very sharp. It's, it is absolutely gorgeous and it really does work. So um, I highly suggest putting your own edge on these. This one is a beast. Love this 1095 from GEC. It is very well done. And in comparison to the Case 1095 that they're doing, um, I think it's highly comparable. So um, I'll show you my 1095 case in a second, but that's how the bullnose runs. It just runs in the slip from Michael. Absolutely beautiful. I need Nikki to put a lanyard on this so I can pull it out easier. I'll prob probably do that tomorrow at her house. Um, so the last one I have here is a kind of dark chestnut brown slip from Richter Knives. Wood grain. Texturing there with white thread. This one I think is just gorgeous. And inside of this one I have my case mini trapper in burlap micarta with 1095 steel. So this is my mini trapper. This is a recent acquisition and a recent model from Case that they have kind of redone and made more premium. So we have half stops on this model, which is really nice. That's not something that we see all the time from Case. So we have a half stop here and then we open it up. Same with our spade blade. Nice half stop, opens up. And this is in 1095, as you can see right there. So 1095 high carbon. Again, a tool steel that will patina. This has started to patina. This is my utility blade. So this one doesn't have as much of a patina as the clip point here. This one's starting to really pick up some, some pretty colors and some fingerprints and stuff especially on that side. That's just beautiful. The little stains. So this one is in 1095 as well. And the edge that this came with was very noticeably different in comparison to the chrome vanadium from Case and the True Sharp from Case. So right off the bat, the 1095 that Case is doing, in my opinion, is superior to the other two stools, steels that they have been offering us. Very toothy, very sharp and it's been holding an edge way longer than the other steels. Um, so the carbon steel that Case is doing, I think is going to be worth your money, absolutely, because I've been using this a good amount and it is just super toothy, super well done. Edge retention is way better than what we were getting before with the other two steels. And I really, really like that. Um, 
This clip point blade is what I've been using again for my food prep, like my lunch and my stuff where I don't want a yucky blade. And then this spay blade, I, it, this is what I've been using as a utility blade and for my, my dog's food processing their, their bones and their meat and stuff. So that's more of a utility blade for me. And people have been asking me like, what's the point of carrying a knife with two blades? And that's, that's my answer is that you can, you can give them different tasks so that you're not um, cross contaminating stuff, you know, like if that makes any sense. So I really like using this as my utility blade, especially because this spay blade shape is awesome for utility tasks. I, I have never found that I enjoy using clip points as utility blades. I think these are a little thin and, and pokey and pointy for utility tasks. Um, there have been times where I use this blade shape to open certain things and it's just very easy to puncture stuff inside of a package or a box when you're working with something that pointy. It's just not really my favorite blade shape for utility work and it's also very fragile. So this is really like a food prep knife for me. And then you have your spay blade which is, you know, way more robust, way more utilitarian. Um, that's a pretty thick blade stock. You have this little cut off here that stops you from puncturing things because that's what this blade is for, right? It's not supposed to puncture anything. This is a spay blade for literally spaying. <laughs> so you're not really supposed to be puncturing organs and stuff with that blade, hence why um, it's great for utility tasks. But yeah, it, you know, it also kind of replicates a sodbuster type blade or that snub nose type blade style, right? Uh, we have a little bit of the cutting edge and belly facing out, which I just made a video on yesterday, so that's really great for a lot of your everyday tasks. But this blade shape, in my opinion, is awesome for everyday usage aside from processing game, you know? Because not everybody is processing game with these knives anymore, really. Of course, you can do it, that's what they were made for, but if you want to run this as an EDC knife or as a backup EDC knife, you can because it it's just phenomenal at that. The burlap micarta is really pretty. It's um, finished and kind of glossy, see? So it's not it's not going to pick up a patina like normal micarta, right? Because it's finished and glossed over. It might get a little bit darker, but it's not grippy. It's very silky and smooth and slippery. I kind of wish that they would have left it raw, but it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, Everything is flush on this, smooth. The shield is in there nice and secure. Pins are beyond flushed. Just a stunning little piece. Highly recommend picking one of these up. These are available at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I don't have any affiliation with them. That's just where I get my case knives. I have the world's largest selection of case knives. So um, check out Smoky, Knife, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But this is just a stunning little piece and I really enjoy running it in this matching slip because they're basically the same color. And I, I run my slip joints in slips like this so that you don't get debris in the moving parts because you can't take this apart to clean it like a normal knife. So we are trying to avoid getting debris in the moving parts at all costs. So that just runs in there like that. Good to go. Uh, one thing before I head out here that I wanted to mention is one of the pins on this old timer I did have to grind down with my Dremel. It was sticking up just a hair and it was catching on my hand so I took my Dremel and I just flattened that out a little bit. It's still a hair proud but nothing too crazy at all. Um, I need to put my finishing bit on there and, and you know satin finish it because right now it's just a rough finish. So I want to make it I want to match it with the the rest of the pins here but at least it's like not sticking out as much as it was before but yeah when I first got it this was sticking way up and it was like catching on my hand and it was really sharp so I did take my Dremel and just kind of hit it a couple times with it to smooth it out I'll, I'll refinish it so that it's matching the rest of the pins but um, in terms of quality control on this knife it it came very, very well done. 
Um, having to grind that pin down does not bother me in the slightest because everything else about this is absolutely gorgeous. And I will give you guys a, a little hint here. Um, I have a slip coming in specifically for this and you're not going to believe what it looks like. So this has a, a little home on the way, which I'm very excited to show you guys, but um, that's going to be a cool, a cool little set when that comes in. So yeah, we're going to continue to try to figure out what this steel is. Who knows? But boy, is this a nice knife so far. I, I love this. It is just, oh, it's so smooth, man. And it's not like loose, right? Like, like this isn't going to come out or anything. It's just, it's just once you get it out, it is like a dream. Oh, it is just so smooth. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. Model number is five, uh, let's see, 50 TG. In case you guys need to look it up. 50 TG. But that is it for today, guys. I need to go actually be productive here instead of playing with knives outside. I have a lot of fencing to get out of my truck. So I will see you guys on the next video. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. The channel is growing out of control. We have so many fun things on the way. Um, a lot of testing to do. I have a lot of fun video ideas. So um, thank you guys for the continued support on the channel. I love you guys so, so much. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you so soon. Have a great weekend. Love you all.